Hello, friends. Uh, we we gather again to uh, study and prepare for the scripture readings. I wasn't able to get the last two weeks together, but we'll start back again. This time it'll be for the the Feast of the Epiphany of the Lord, January 8th, 2017. So we have another reading from the book of Isaiah. I am on page 39 in our 2017 workbook. I'm going to read at the bottom if you'd like to read along with me. Today the church celebrates the manifestation of Christ to all the world, beginning with a reading that overflows with light, brightness, radiance, and glory. This passage comes from the last section of Isaiah, most likely written about the time of Judah's release from Babylonian captivity and their return to the promised land, around 586 BC. The prophet looks forward to the fulfillment of divine promises to recreate the covenant people, the city of Zion, and God's dwelling place among them. Repeatedly, Isaiah stresses that God's act of restoration will be witnessed by foreign nations who will thus recognize the saving work of the Lord. Twice, in the first two verses of today's reading, Isaiah uses the Hebrew word kabod, translated glory. This significant term indicates an outward manifestation of divine presence, at times nearly equivalent to God himself. The earlier prophet, Ezekiel, a Jerusalem priest deported to Babylon among the first wave of exiles, saw vision of the glory of the Lord leaving the temple a certain sign that Judah's final desolation had begun, because without God's saving presence, the city and its people lay completely vulnerable to enemy attack. But Isaiah now announces that not only with the Lord's people with the Lord's people returned to their land, but more importantly, the glory of God will again dwell in their midst in a new temple, in a new Jerusalem. The prophet further proclaims that the radiance of the Lord's saving act will be the marvel of all of other nations and their rulers. A defeated and scattered people will again be gathered together in the promised land, drawing those from foreign, foreign lands to praise the God of Israel. So from that reading, from what I just read, uh, several things important just that that you understand first of all that um this is written at a time when um the israelites are coming from the, their captivity and they are about to to build to rebuild their country after they've been devastated for for centuries and um and so this is this is a a really really big deal and uh they're they're filled with hope and optimism he points out that the word glory is is um, repeated, and it's in there twice in that first uh, long paragraph. So it's important that you emphasize those words. Make sure that, because they they said that um, when 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 they were about to be sent into activity, that the glory le- the glory left the temple, and now the glory is returning. So that's the the symbol that that uh, that uh, God is is returning. So make sure you really uh, uh, emphasize those words. And when you emphasize the words, um, it's uh, it's it's not enough, and maybe sometimes not even the right way. That is just to make it louder. You know, you which you, you've definitely want to set off the word usually by a space of silence before and even a space after. And then you just really uh, uh, lean into that word. You stress it, slow it down, and and, uh, and uh, say it much more deliberately when you want to emphasize a word. Um, so while I'm at it, if you look just real quickly over to the next page on page 40, it says to keep in mind... Uh, use inflection, the high or low pitch of your voice, to convey attitude or feeling. High pitch expresses intensity and excitement. Low pitch it expresses sadness, contrition, or solemnity. 
and that occurs in his first reading. Before I do the reading, I want to look at the uh, commentary to the left. Uh, it, um, in this new book, it, it, it uh, tells what each of the readings is. This was in, an exhortatory reading. That is, it's meant to encourage people. Um, the first sentence there, Imagine speaking to someone whose life has been full of darkness and struggle. You are announcing that the bad times are over. You're persuading this person to rejoice. And really keep that in mind. Uh, uh, you know, there are pe- will be people who will be sitting in the pews right in front of you who uh, are either in bad times or just coming out of some bad times, and they will need your encouragement to lift up their hearts, to rise up in splendor, as it said. It's a very strong opening. Okay, so uh, referring again back to the, the, uh, the uh, to keep in mind on the next page that I just went over, then it talks about the darkness and the thick clouds. And then, and then light, and those definitely have to be contrasted in your voice, and that's going to be a, mostly a matter of pitch. So you're going to light is going to be up here, and darkness will be down here. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. The it says they are so full of light that the light of the Lord that other nations will act will naturally attract to them. Nations shall walk by your light. You know. You will be so bright that nations will look to you. Um, uh, when it talks about raise your eyes and your sons come afar, your sons come afar, but your your daughters in the arms of their nurses. That's a very tender moment there, and, and you should soften that. And your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Okay, there's a new paragraph there. I need to pause. Okay, renew your energy here and really see this rich vision unfold before you. Um, and it talks about the camels and and all of that. Um, and then make sure that you uh, after you after you read that last paragraph that you pause after you finish to let the image really sink in. And you and it, and again it goes without saying, but you need to pause before you begin your reading too. Okay, all right. That's a lot of introduction on this one, but. Let's see what I can do with it. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings, by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out upon you. The wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. All right, so we'll go on to the second reading. This is from Ephesians, and um, I'll go ahead and read the commentary for you. Though commonly called Ephesians, important early manuscripts of this Pauline, that is, from St. Paul, letter, do not carry that designation because the letter does not focus on a specific community but upon, on, but on the unity of the entire church. Many scholars believe that it was written for circulation among a number of local churches in Asia Minor. It is uncertain whether Paul himself authored the letter, but it clearly expresses the perspective of Paul, apostle to the Gentiles. Here the writer stresses that the Israel of the New Age and salvation of salvation expands to embrace both Jews and Gentiles. This insight, a gift of grace for the good of the entire church, reveals the mystery of the gospel of Christ. In New Testament usage, the Greek word mysterion points to much more than something difficult to understand. The mystery encompasses God's plan of salvation, ultimately revealed through Jesus Christ. The author emphasizes several times that this mystery cannot be perceived by human effort, but only by means of divine revelation. 
In this passage, Ephesians strongly emphasizes that God's plan reaches completion in the form of one united body of Christ on earth, one redeemed community in which Jews and Gentiles equally participate in the culmination of God's plan for human salvation. I was reminded as I read this about the uh, the excerpt that uh, uh, J.B. and Debbie showed us from the the, um, the film A.D., in which Paul is uh, uh, confronting Peter and how the the gospel message is truly for the Gentiles, and it really comes together in this reading. Uh, I, maybe we can get that available to you somehow. Okay, so looking at this, this is a didactic reading, that is, it's a teaching in which Paul shares the good news that the whole world, Jews and Gentiles alike, share in the promise of Jesus. Paul lays a foundation of credibility here. So the first sentence he's just trying to say, this is why I think I can say this. Uh, Commentary, be sure you know the mystery he's referring to, that we are all members of the body of Christ. The mystery... uh, it's because really up to that time, it was really thought that only the Jews were uh, going to be saved and could be with God. But now, with through Jesus, it is opened, and blessedly so, to all of us. Um, okay. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit. Namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. And finally, uh, the gospel reading. Um, so uh, I, I'm, it's kind of a long uh, gospel uh, commentary below, and I'll, I'll let you read that. Um, what's important is that that the Magi came from the east, and that means that they were Gentiles. So this feast of the Epiphany is uh, uh, really is about us who are not. Most of us were not born Jewish, uh, but we are not a part of that original um, chosen people. But that chosen people has been extended through our Lord Jesus to us, and for that we rejoice. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in the Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it was written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do homage, do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, they prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way.
the gospel of the Lord. Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, looking forward to a great year, and God bless.